My name is Jim, and I'm inviting you to follow me on a 370-mile solo kayaking adventure down the Mississippi River. The series will show you how I selected and rigged my kayak for long-distance expeditions. I'll show you simple and almost guaranteed methods for catching all the fish you can handle, and I'll share what I learned about camping along the banks of the mightiest river in North America. It's time to change our latitude in a significant way. Let's take a couple days sprinting south and uh, then we'll start looking for good fishing spots again. We've got a cold front coming through, so we'll crash out in the rain and when it's over, we'll get back to rolling. I think we'll have a good time from here on out. I don't think I'll be frying any more fish, but that blackening, that blackening is good stuff, man. We're gonna do some more of that. Changes in attitude, changes in latitude, something, 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 and Jimmy Buffett's dead. Up ahead is Vicksburg. Forty-five version of a pelican. Ulysses S. Grant pounded the land and the swamps in the area around here for months and months during the siege of Vicksburg until it finally fell. There's probably not one square foot of land out here that hadn't had a Union boot stamped into it. That's what I call a campaign. Read the history on that, it's amazing. Well, from the waterfront, looks like the place hasn't quite recovered from the invasion. <laughs> There's a bridge over the river at Vicksburg. This corner behind me uncommonly rough. There's no wind, but it is choppy, choppy. There's casino number one. I'm gonna pick one or two of these two to camp outside so I can come in like a vagrant and eat all their food and drink all their booze. Other side, we're downstream from the bridge. Casino over there. Nice isolated looking little beach right here. I'm gonna pull out here and go for a hike. Dangerous reptiles in this area. No guess beyond this point. There are dangerous reptiles over there, you guys. Dangerous reptiles. If you need work done, everybody at casinos, especially at the hotels, they're tip driven. You need stuff done, you need your laundry done, you need some other stuff done. A few dollars goes a long way. I don't know what they make hourly, but they get after the work if uh, you got a few dollars for tip money. Anyway, you keep that in mind. You tell the people that you're kayaking down the river and they get behind the mission. <laughs> they want to participate, so then you deal them out some cash, get all your gear cleaned. You get a night with a soft bed and uh, a hot shower. I think it took three showers while I was in there. Regular shower ain't going to cut it. And now I'm walking about a half a mile back to where I've got my kayak and my gear stashed. I don't know if you could see that. The other side of that log is my setup. Uh, I don't want to walk back through that mud to get out of here, but I'm going to have to. And there's my egress. Everything appears to be unmolested. Boat, rods, gear, solar panel, everything's good to go. I got my stuff disguised from both sides. Only thing that stands out is that blue chair, but I wouldn't give that up for a world. We got real bad news brewing behind you guys <laughs> there's a cold front coming down there's a lot of storms uh they like guaranteeing tornadoes and all that sort of thing and for what area of the south exactly where i'm at there's a wing dike across from the casinos that looks like a good spot on the louisiana side it's not that far from here and then I've got to put out the full tent and regalia, <laughs> batten down the hatches and uh, settle in for some rough weather. We're gonna ride it out, baby. Till about four in the morning, the rain's supposed to be beating the crap out of us. I'm gonna take a breather, then we'll go for a ride.
in the last 24 hours, the river is forecast to be 1.8 feet Tuesday morning, 1.3 feet Wednesday morning. Something wicked this way comes. It's coming. All right, storm journal. We're batting in pretty good, but uh, I don't know. I got I got some trepidation about tonight. It's like 4:30. It's just starting to come in. I can hear it coming, man. It's <laughs> it's coming to get me. But uh, I, I'm in a pretty good shelter, and I got all my crap right next to me, and it's all in waterproof bags. And if the end of the world happens, <laughs> you'll find me and all my stuff wherever we land. We'll all be together. <laughs> <laughs> I'll report in later. Yep. It's coming to get me. I'll go back in here where it's safe. Alright, let's hope this thing holds. <laughs> Woo! I'm in for it now, boys. <laughs> we are in for it. Well, let's see. That was very close. Woo! So basically, there's like two major storm systems that are rolling in my very close proximity. And now two tornadoes reported. And there's, I'll show you. All right, those are the storms all coming to get me, but now they got red on them. It looks like I'm going to slide in between. I don't know. It's hard to tell. The river beats it up. You know what I mean? You can see the storm change as soon as it gets over and hits the river. Sun's going down, so that's going to steal some of the heat energy out of the storm. Maybe it won't be as severe. Maybe it'll start dying off. But that back trapezoid there that's pointing kind of at me, that's the one I'm looking at. So I don't know. We'll see. I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm in a pretty good tent. It's going to be pretty nasty weather, but we'll, we'll see what happens. I think I'm good to go. I'm just going to keep a hold of this, uh, this GoPro I've got on this ball cap and keep a hold of this thing. And I got my one bag that... Uh, can I leave my custody? It's all my important stuff. If I got to, I'll bail out of this thing and run for it <laughs> into the woods. Yeah, it's coming down now. Pretty, pretty significant amount of rain. Uh, pretty good storm overhead. I'm doing all right though. I'm not wet. Uh, I have everything I need inside this domicile, so I'm just gonna hold down and hold tight and hope it holds. <laughs> but right now, the way I've placed my campsite, I'm very satisfied with that because I can hear the wind whipping those trees, you know, up on top of the hill. I'm in what you call the lee side, which is a side away from the direction of wind, right? The side away from the storm. I mean, it's not gonna protect me, protect me, but it's it's greatly reducing the amount of wind damage or wind shear that I'll have to deal with right here. Here comes the edge of a wicked one. Time to bunker back down. Everything in watertight bags. If I find it floating later after the tornado, it'll still be good. <laughs> Feet are still dry, everything's dry inside here. I'm good with the teacup so far.
there's that casino I stayed at far in the distance. Now you can see I didn't paddle all that much, but it made much more sense to go ahead and set up camp, get ready for the storm. We need to go make some water. What I like about rainwater tastes better than river water. And my kayak tends to fill up with rainwater when it pours. And I like that because now I've got rainwater to filter. It's just nicer taste to it. Just tastes like rainwater. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Now the rainwater that's collected in this thing is more of a primordial soup than it is good drinking water. But with the filter I've got set up, I'll show you how I'll do that. Hose right over the nipple and the Nalgene bottle cap. Get you a Nalgene bottle. Dirty water bag. Sucker just, boop, snaps in there. It's all gravity fed. Big stout metal coffee cup. I don't use it for nothing but utility. So once you kind of get it adjusted the way you want it, get a nice smooth flow, right? No kinks in the hose. Just try to ease it so that it's just more naturally flowing. Bring it up, bring the bag up. Try to get the bottle down low, you know? Nice easy pathway and it'll start filling bottle after bottle after bottle up until I've got, see these are like a, a liter plus. I don't want to travel with five full ones, you know what I mean? I usually only travel with three full ones. And if I need to make more, I make more when I hit landfall. I'm gonna finish my morning coffee. Go for another walk. <music> Madness is over. The skies are blue. First thing in the morning, sunshine out, charging my batteries. But it's time to go that way. These are the two pairs of footwear I have. Some uh, Columbia PFC flip-flops and some Dagon Crocs fishing shoes, which jury's still out on whether I like them or not. I've also got here a pair of seal skins, which are kind of like a, almost like a wetsuit sock sort of thing. If I wear these seal skins with the Crocs fishing shoes, then I have a de facto like boot, water boot, and uh, it works out well. Just on cold mornings wearing the seal skins till about noon, then you peel them off when it warms up nicely, Dad, yeah, that's pretty good, pretty good. Getting in and out of the water, in and out of the kayak. 99% of my time though is spent barefoot. I hardly wear shoes or anything at all. Chilly mornings like this, but the sun's out. You know, I can launch the kayak, feet will be cold for a few minutes till they dry out in the kayak, and then everything's fine. So, like a full-on shoe or an insulated boot or a rubber boot or anything like that, I, that trash just gets in the way until it gets too cold. And then, what are you doing? You camping, you camping in, in you know, 25-degree weather? That's fine, I guess. Still catch fish. So, at 9 o'clock in the morning, the Jackery 
in full sun in November, pulling down about seven watts. It's pulling down eight watts out of the 25 watts uh, supposedly available from this solar panel. You know, it's November. I don't know what to expect, but I'm not mad at it. The price was right. It's uh, been durable. Jackery's done good too. It's gotten wet. I needed to charge my phone. I just blew into one of the USB ports, blew all the water out of it and stuck the cord in there and charged up perfectly fine. So the rain fly on the T-Cop tent's reversible. This is the sandy colored side. As you can see, probably be just fine out here, but I like the camouflage better. That's just personal stuff, man. Back in the old days, that's the stuff we wore. Anyway, gotta let it dry. Just, I mean, it's just completely soaked. All the condensation, everything, so. We're gonna we're gonna let it lose about two pounds of water and then we're gonna fold it up and get out of here all right we're gonna load this thing up but the first thing we're gonna do is move it much much closer to the water that's it that's a much better way you don't have to drag the heavy thing full of all your gear all the way down to the water line And that's everything all rigged up, ready to go. That's a lot of gear, but we're going a lot of miles. Oh, now I gotta put that away. Glide on out there, boy. You can just stay stern into the shore without like getting stuck. That's a pretty perfect, it's almost a pretty perfect exit. If I lose another 30 pounds, it will be a perfect exit. Just in case you wanted to know, this is absolutely worth the trip. <laughs> absolutely worth it. Game plan right now is to cover some ground. We want to make some good distance right on into the afternoon. And then we got to decide, are we going to short-term camp and then move and have our Thanksgiving on a different shore? Or are we going to wake up and have Thanksgiving from an ideal camp? We want a good fishing spot. We want a big turkey-sized blue catfish, and we're gonna roast them. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, we do want to have a fish dinner on Thanksgiving, so we are hydrated, we are motivated. It's weird; it takes you a second, and then you get out here and you snap into. Oh yeah, here's how the river is. This swirl, that swirl. How you want to drive through a patch of stuff, you know? I thought hard about making it to Natchez Trace by the end of the month. Not Natchez Trace. I think I can make it to Natchez, Mississippi, or Walls, Louisiana, across the, across the way, but probably Natchez. It spins you around to where it wants you to go, especially around Wayne Dykes. It just wants to take you and mix you up and fling you, <laughs> fling you into the Wing Dyke. Well, I'm not scared of the Wing Dyke anymore. It doesn't bother me, see? So on days like today, my strategy is always get that uh, electricity filled up. So I might make changes in my course based on being able to keep my nose pointed into the sun. Technique I call ABAP. That's as much battery as possible. <laughs> Pulled up in a not ideal spot, but there's like level ground. You can see how it dips right here. Plenty of firewood, as far as the eye can see. I really want a good fishy spot tomorrow. So that's what we're gonna try to do. Tonight we're gonna camp here. Let's put some wood in the bottom so it doesn't get wet. There's a couple of starter squares by Royal Oak. Starter squares. And you got some chunks of that uh, lighter log trash. Especially when things are wet. Start stacking your firewood, letting it dry out. wet and crappy days. What are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs>